If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good. Today we go back to my home state of New York and we've got Macrina Doyle on the phone with us who's the coordinator of news services for St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York, which is a beautiful area of New York. It's up near the Adirondack Mountains and St. Lawrence University is a private co-ed school with about 2,000 students or so. But the important part and why Macrina is with us today on Green is Good is that St. Lawrence University is always named one of the greenest colleges in America. Welcome to Green is Good, Macrina, and how did your school keep being named one of the greenest colleges in America? Well, we began uh, the whole process a very long time ago. That's one of the reasons that we're so well known for this. We've had an academic program, an academic major, in environmental studies since the mid-1970s. So uh, our students have been interested in this topic for a very long time, and our faculty as well. Uh, And we've had a sustainability director on campus for three or four years now. So it's just, uh, it's part of who we are. So St. Lawrence University, and, and and for our listeners who have an iPad open or their iPhone or their laptop or their desktop and they're listening to the show, you can see where Macrina is at www.st.com lawu.edu and I'll spell that S T L A W U just like the U dot E D U. Uh because they have a whole green section on that and they have their whole sustainability program. So you St. Lawrence University was really green before it was cool to be green. That's absolutely right. <laughs> and um we've had faculty involved in environmental research for a very long time. And um, I think it has something to do with our location. We are in a very uh, rural area. We're close to the St. Lawrence River and the Adirondack Mountains. So students who come here tend to be those that are very interested in the natural world. It's a great point. You know, so it's a very inspiring uh, setting to go to university and to also keep always in mind uh, the great environment that we live in because they's really our degrees are going to do us no good if we continue just to you know liquidate the the precious earth that we live on we have a very large campus of over uh, well just about a thousand acres and we really consider the adirondack region to be our laboratory oh. uh, we, we have had students doing work there for a long time we're, for over a decade, we've had a program, you know, students do semesters abroad in uh, or other countries. We've had a program for over a decade of an Adirondack semester. We have about a dozen students every fall who go to a very remote location in the Adirondacks, yeah. and they live and take classes there. Wow. The faculty who teach the classes have to canoe to the site every day. The students live in yurts there and they learn about being off the grid they have time and quiet to contemplate their place in nature wow. they give up all their electronic appliances for the semester oh. and it's really a remarkable program that is for the participants life changing well you know macrina that's a great story and and wonderful for 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 students out there uh, or uh, aspiring students to hear about because we just did a whole show uh, a couple of weeks back, Mike and I did, with the guy who is leading the whole off-the-grid movement. So uh, you have actually an off-the-grid semester at your university. We do. We also have a, a, a course. Uh, it's a seminar for first-year students. It's about identity in the age of the Internet. And as part of the course, for two weeks, students have to unplug. There's no internet, there's no cell phones, there's no tweeting, there's no texting, nothing. And then they have to keep a journal about it, uh, how how they're affected by that and how they communicate with one another when they don't have all of those things anymore. And most of our students find that it's a very rewarding experience. Macrina, this just sounds so amazing. I'm just wishing that (laughs) at a course like this, had been available back when I was in college. And uh, when John was referring to living off the the grid, our guest, Nick Rosen, I think, would be just right in your corner about this 
whole experiment. And now Nick is is definitely he's all about using the internet, but he makes a very good point in his book about living off grid, about what you can do, taking a break, just as you suggest, and uh, just unplugging from from everything for just a couple of weeks and living very deliberately and simplifying, much like Henry David Thoreau said. That's absolutely right. One of the things, well, a couple of things that our students in the Adirondack semester. Um, find. One of the things that they have really never done before is write letters, actual letters on paper. How cool. How important. And many of them discover the joy of that, of really thinking about what they're going to say and expressing it in writing on paper and then having those letters as a keepsake. Uh, It's, for many of them, the first time they ever experienced that. The other thing that they really enjoy, many of our students have no experience prior to coming to college with the hands-on preparation of food. Wow. Um, You know, if you think about how young people live now, uh, the family dinner hour isn't what it used to be. Uh, They have grown up eating in mall food courts and things like that. They've never actually prepared food by hand from scratch. That is and they do that as part of the Adirondack semester, and wow. they absolutely love it. They look forward to when it's their week to prepare food for everyone, and they take great pride in serving the food that they've made with their own hands to their friends. Hey, listen, I'll throw a little advertisement after 26 years of marriage. That makes them a lot more, a, a better spouse for whoever they meet after college. That's for darn sure. <laughs> That's one of the things that I think that they discover from that experience. That is wonderful. Now, you know, and again, for our listeners who just joined us, we're so happy and honored to have Macrina Doyle on, who's the coordinator of news services from St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York, a small but wonderful and very green university tucked in the Adirondack mounds macrina uh you know i I've, I've been on your website mike's on it right now in fact and you have on, on it your green pages area and what i love about this is that there's a hot topic section which i want to touch on and before we go to the hot topics though talk about the students is your 2000 or so student body is it only from new york new jersey connecticut or are they coming from all over now uh, we have students from literally every state in the Union and from many international uh, locations as well. About 50% of our students tend to come from New York State yeah. and the other 50% from elsewhere. And is the Green and Sustainability program that you that you created and also built way before it was cool to be green uh, has it become a good marketing tool for the school now? Is it attracting more than you had typically seen five, six, seven years ago? Oh, absolutely. This topic is very, very important to college-age students, and it's one of the things that they will research about a school before they go there, whether they're going to you know, major in environmental studies or not. They're interested in whether or not the university lives sustainably. Do we live the message that we're teaching in the classroom? They are very, very interested in that, and they're very, um, they're more sophisticated, I think, than, than many would think. Many of them are very aware of, uh, you know, purchasing locally and eating locally and, you know, the use of pesticides. I know one thing that um, they look at when they go to a, a campus is, we started a few years ago, um, we have no mow zones on our campus. So they only get mowed a couple times a year. About 20% of the campus is a no mow zone. Wow. And that's very attractive to them. Their parents sometimes say, gee, it looks like you guys don't really take care of the grounds very much. But when it's explained, the students absolutely embrace it and think that that's a wonderful thing. So it's a very, very important topic to college-bound students. That is so, so, so the, the, the next generation behind us, the green-agers uh, that are looking for your university now, um, are, are looking for universities that not only talk a good talk, you're saying, but truly walk a good walk. That's absolutely right. And that's really how we developed this. I don't like to call it a, a green shopping list because it's kind of uh, advocating not so much shopping 
(laughs) But one of the things that, that we do as part of our sustainability program is students really want to live the the green way. They want to know that they're doing things right. So they can voluntarily ask to have their residence hall room audited. So someone who's trained will go there and they look to see are they recycling correctly? Are they using compact fluorescent bulbs in their lamps? Do they have a power strip? so that they can turn off, really turn off, all of their appliances. How many appliances do they have, and are they Energy Star compliant? All of those kinds of things. And then at the end, they get a green grade. And a lot of our students are surprised. They think that they're living very sustainably, and they're surprised to find that there's more that they could be doing. And they're very enthusiastic about it. They want to do the right thing. So... After we had this for a little while, I was talking with our sustainability director, and I said, you know, in some ways it doesn't seem fair that they get to campus and set up shop in their residence hall room, and then we tell them what they should be doing. Maybe we should be letting students know about this before they ever get to campus. Mm. And, you know, every college, including St. Lawrence, sends incoming students, first-year students, that list of here are some things that we suggest you bring with you. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, maybe we should develop a list of what you should bring with you if you're really interested in being environmentally conscious. So we came up with this list, and, of course, the first thing on the list is don't bring so much stuff. So smart. <laughs> so smart. So what I love, what I'm learning. I mean, l- listen, you're you're making me want to go back to college now. You know, <laughs> this is so. You, I'm lucky I get to be here every day, and I don't get graded. Oh, this is great. I mean, <laughs> you know, and and as you said, not only are you teaching, and I want to get to these hot topics because this blows me away. The hot topics that you're teaching in classroom and the students can avail themselves of, but it's not only just theory and philosophy and and classroom. You're giving them real life skills by auditing their rooms and giving them a grade and giving them that in their welcome packet, a a list of some do's and don'ts prior to getting to campus. You're helping them, giving them real-life green skills. That's absolutely right. For example, we don't, obviously, we don't charge students by the room for energy. Okay? That's built into their living costs. Okay. But we think it's a good life lesson for them to be conscious of how much energy they're using as individuals. So that's why we advocate the use of the compact fluorescent bulbs and the Energy Star appliances. We, of course, advocate that they not have so many appliances. And, it, you know, it, it does make them aware of those costs to the university, but we hope that we've given them some life lessons, too. They're going to have to go out and make their way on their own after they leave here. And, uh, you know, they learn a lot by doing that. We have uh, a couple times a year we have competitions between the different residence halls for who can use the least amount of energy. And to whatever residence hall uses the least, they get a prize. Wow. Wow. You know what else is really cool? I'm on your fabulous site again. If you're just <laughs> joining us and you're, you're listening and you've got your uh, laptop or your iPad, it's uh, www s-t-l-a-w-u dot e-d-u. Go to the green section. Macrina, what is really cool, I, I think back to my college experience, spent a lot of time at the student union, and I guzzled Lord knows how many gallons of coffee. Mm-hmm. But you've got a section in there that uh, encourages the students to use their own mug uh, and get discounts in both hot and cold drinks at the North Star Cafe. And uh, you're also advising them to re- refill their own water bottles at Dana instead of buying a, a brand new uh, bottle of uh, water. Those are two of the items on our come to school green list. Bring that travel mug with you. A lot of colleges, St. Lawrence included, will give you a discount on coffee if you fill up your own mug rather than use one of the paper styrofoam mugs. And we do try to discourage the purchase of the plastic water bottles every day. So if people bring their own reusable water bottle, that's a bonus. We absolutely uh, uh, advocate. We also, in our dining hall, we do not have trays. Oh, what do you have? You just go and buy the items individually because the use of the trays costs a lot in water and energy use. So we have done away with them. And in doing that, we have found that there's a lot less food waste. 
That is so interesting. You know, by the way, most of the time when I get a tray, I, I get rid of it anyway. When I sit down, I, I don't eat on top of the tray, so that makes so much sense. That's exactly right, and we were using a lot of, of water and energy to heat that water that really wasn't necessary. That makes so much sense. Now, uh, Mike has Mike has the, all the boards and all the, the stuff in front of him, and I think he, I, I, he's on your website now. I think he's actually applying to come uh, <laughs> online. Well, says, we're going to have finished, a look John. at those. <laughs> he's almost <laughs> finished. <laughs> if, he, if he does that, I'm coming with him because we can broadcast Green is Good uh, on the Clear Channel <laughs> Radio Network right from your, your grades. This school is amazing. And, for, you know, listen, you're our, you know, this is the second college. The first one we've had on was UCLA and it was so inspirational, and this is a trend that Mike and I are seeing, and we want to help continue to promote because we want our Laurel listeners to send their their their, their green agers to uh, universities that are doing all the great things that you're doing. But I want to get now to these hot topics because this is amazing, and you 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 could pick whichever ones you want to go into <laughs> and share more about. But I mean, some of these hot topics on your. <clears throat> Excuse me on your great website, like uh, you were touching on already, sustainable food systems mm-hmm. and renewable energy, green building, climate change, education and research, transportation, water, which is critical for you know community and waste stream. This is what your students can come and 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 immerse themselves in and get inspired in. This is amazing. With you know, how long did it take you to build such a a breadth of curriculum and and what are some of the hot topics out of all these hot topics? Topics. Give us a you know, give us a greatest hits if you can, Macrina. Well, there's been quite a few greatest hits, and many of them actually have come from student initiatives. Our students have a lot of great ideas, and wow. I'm very proud to say that we listen to our students and try to implement those ideas whenever we can. Uh, one of them that that has just worked out wonderfully. Uh, another item that people think that they have to bring to college, particularly a college like St. Lawrence that is in a relatively uh, remote area, they think that they need a car. Well, you know, often students, when they're on campus, uh, if that car is there, they'll use it to go from one end of the campus to the other. They'll use it to go into, we're, we're at, you know, in the middle of a small village, which is very lovely, and that car really isn't needed. So uh, we had students who wanted to start a, a bike loan program, and they started it up, and they had some difficulties with it. So the way that we worked it out is um, our library, the university library, loans, obviously, books, but we also loan DVDs, and we do loan out some like laptops and some other equipment. Oh. So one of the librarians said, you know, there's really no reason we couldn't add bicycles into that. So our bike loan program is operated out of our library. What a great idea. And it's enormously popular. Wow. That is so... So you're already inspiring and teaching good transportation skills. Mike Mike has... Well, I'm on the site right now, Macarena and John. This is so cool because... Uh, you, it's the Green Bikes program on campus that was started in 2004, but you painted all of the bikes green. Is that correct? <laughs> well, we thought about that. Uh, many of the of the bikes were blue okay. when we purchased them, and it was confusing for people because they said, "Well, it's the Green Bikes program, but this bike is blue." So, yeah, we did. <laughs> but but <laughs> green and blue are the colors of the earth, anyway, though. That's true. Okay. And you've also got them uh, marked with one less car sticker, which I think really hammers home the message. Which is really, I just think, just brilliant to reinforce what it so is that smart. you're doing. Well, and one of the things that has come out of that program, too, is once the students have borrowed the bike, it encourages them to visit the local stores. Um, A lot of students have told me that that they will use the bikes to ride down to our village's farmer's market, for example. And if they didn't have that transportation available to them, they might not have made that visit. So it's been um, uh, sort of a uh, multi-layered bonus. 
Um, so, what, what? Tell us about some other great initiatives that you're doing on campus. You know, I, you know, I love obviously the sustainable food systems. Are any of your students actually doing that on or around campus? Is is, is there any farming going on and and sort of farmers market with with the uh, with with that food? We we have that actually here in Fresno at Fresno State. There's a wonderful farmers market run by the students, and that's something very exciting mm. that the community avails itself of. Uh, of so when you talk about sustainable food systems on your hot topics how does that work well we're a bit challenged in that area because of our location our growing season is quite short ah gotcha so we don't do that we do however our dining service um runs its own uh herb garden that they use um for um preparing meals on campus but what we have done is we've greatly stepped up our uh purchase of local foods and local products. Gotcha. Um, we have increased that, uh, and quite honestly, uh, we have more vendors in the area who are interested in working with us on that. We have a, a local business that started up just last year. Um, it's a, a snack food business. They make potato chips and other chips and salsas and so forth, and they d- debuted their first product, which they called Canton Crunchies, right here on campus, because they knew that St. Lawrence was a place where people would be interested in a locally made and locally developed product. So that's another truly great hit for us. And just another, just uh, also reading, you know, for our listeners out there that are interested in truly becoming uh, a student of green. I mean, this campus is amazing. St. Lawrence University, it's, you, you've committed to carbon neutrality in your campus operations, and you've signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. We did. We were among the uh, first group of signers to that. It was uh, very important to us to commit to that. We have um, uh, uh, our relatively new science building is lead gold. While it was being built, we thought it was going to be lead silver, and the builders got so excited about using so many of the sustainable products in its uh, construction that they added more in, and we wound up getting it certified lead gold. It was the first science building in New York State to be certified uh, lead gold. Um, Science buildings are kind of complicated. They have um, obviously, you have to be very careful about disposing of chemicals, and there are air exchange systems in the laboratories and things like that. So to have a lead gold science building is really an achievement. That's really quite an accomplishment. You're right, Macrina. And are, am I correct in this that that uh, St. Lawrence University was one of the first uh, campuses in the United States to uh, make as part of their regular operating budget uh, purchasing RECs, the renewable energy credits? That's absolutely right. And we just actually, I just found out uh, the other day that we have, we are still committed to that. We've just made uh, another purchase of renewable energy uh, credits. We have as part of our, our trustees, again, this was a student initiative, our student government organization went to our board of trustees and said, if this is important to us, we think that it should be part of the university's stated values. And the Board of Trustees agreed. And several years ago, environmental conservation became a stated value of St. Lawrence University. Well, I, you know, I'm just going to leave our listeners with one last great fact that your, your great university recycles approximately 25% of your waste stream, which has reduced your carbon, uh, you know, your landfill contribution by roughly the size of a football field covered with a one foot layer of trash. That's amazing, that's, Macrina. That's right, and we're that's working amazing. with the with the village on a mutual composting project that we hope will really get underway this year. Macrina, we're down. Unfortunately, we're down to the to the last minute, and I I just want to give that minute to you to share any last pearls of wisdom. Uh, Mike and I have been so inspired, and our students out there should be so inspired to come to either your great university or other great universities that are going green like yours, um, so they. Can could get you know the right kind of sustainability education but the last minute's yours go ahead macrina and share your last pearls of wisdom with our with our listeners out there 
Well, I would just say uh, uh, young people are an inspiration to us. These are topics that they're very interested in, and we gain inspiration from them every day. And if they think that they, you know, I, I can understand how they sometimes get discouraged, but believe me, these little steps make a huge difference. And um, we hope that they keep coming up with those ideas. Well, Macrina Doyle, uh, what you're doing at St. Lawrence University with your colleagues, uh, I want our listeners to go see more about this on your Green Pages section, www.stlawu.edu. You're, you're educating the Green Agers and the leaders of the future of the United States and the world. And, tr- and, and Macrina Doyle, we thank you for your time today. And Mike and I really know that you are truly living proof that green is good.